What is up, everybody, and welcome back to the Mid-Level Media Channel, your hub for everything physical media and entertainment. I am Ken, and I'm here today to do, you guys know, it's Nicolas Cage month here on the Mid-Level Media Channel, so I'm trying to dive into as many Nicolas Cage films as I possibly can in the month of June. I have called it a summer of Cage, and I decided to... Uh, check out Wild at Heart, David Lynch's Wild at Heart, starring Nicolas Cage and Laura Dern. This is from 1990, and I did check out this Shout Factory version, um, and this is spine number 46, because Shout Factory numbers their spines, but Scream Factory doesn't. So I've had this in the collection for a while, so this month kind of gave me a good excuse uh, to finally check this movie out, because I was definitely intrigued uh, by this film. So yeah, we're going to talk about the movie and because I checked out the Shout Factory version, we'll do a little bit of a Blu-ray review, um, as well. I'll link it down below to purchase. I'm not sure what it's running right now, but, uh, we'll find out before we get to the end of the video, but we're going to talk about the movie mainly. But before I get into it, I have to ask if you're not yet a subscriber to the Middle Level Media channel, if you like physical media, Blu-rays, 4Ks, uh, that kind of stuff. If you like owning the movies that you love, all this stuff that's behind me, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, be sure to like this video and comment down below, guys. Are you are you a fan of Wild at Heart? Are you a fan of David Lynch um, in general as a director? Let me know in the comment section below. And again, let me know if you own this uh, Shout Factor release um, as well. So yeah, and turn on those bell notifications. You see, I'm, I'm kind of befuddled. I don't even know how to really go about starting this review. I guess I should start with just my general experience with David Lynch. I'm I'm not very I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of David Lynch so far. He makes very weird, awkward, bizarre films that are just like very dreamlike, very surreal. Like I get what he's going for and I I can totally get why like, you know, film fans, film connoisseurs, um, you know, the the highfalutin uh, moviegoers like David Lynch and his style. I get it. And I, I certainly like movies of this type. I, I just don't know what it is. Uh, it's, it's almost like while I'm watching his movies, it's like just nothing makes sense. Like nothing just like goes together. Like all the pieces are there, but it's almost like he just purposefully just jumbles them all around and never puts it together for you. Um, and again, I don't need all my movies spoon fed to me, but it's like the pieces that he's presenting to you, um, are just so awkward and it's like, you can't possibly solve it. So you just have to like, look at this jumbled mess and just, and just deal with it and hope that you, you can find the beauty in that without actually being able to put the puzzle. That's the best analogy I can use to what, what it's like to watch in a David Lynch movie. I've seen a uh, lost highway. I didn't like that movie at all. I didn't like it at all. Blue Velvets was um, enjoyable in parts. I, I liked it okay. And I would say I enjoy Blue Velvets um, probably in the same level as I did Wild at Heart. Um, so I'd say I probably enjoyed this about the same as Blue Velvet. It's a watchable movie. There's some stuff there uh, for your regular movie going sensibilities to kind of latch on to. Um, but Lost Highway, I, I just it's too far out there for me. I still need to check out Eraserhead. I still need to check out Elephant Man. Those are two big ones I haven't seen. Dune, I have seen, and that, that's goofy, wacky sci-fi stuff. It's it's way out there, but it kind of fits because it's set in another universe anyway. And Mulholland Drive, I watched the first 30 minutes and fell asleep, and I never picked it back up. I just this is like as soon as I turn this on, and I was under the impression that Wild at Heart was a little bit more straightforward than most of the Lynch movies. But from the second this movie starts, I'm like, oh, this is a David Lynch film. You just know it as soon as you see it. I'm like, oh, this is David Lynch. It like does this weird, bizarre like cuts and edits and like just bright lights in your face, and then it goes into this like hard rock. A score that doesn't make any sense in context of what's happening in the actual movie. Just everything's just super bizarre and weird. And it's like, okay, we're watching a David Lynch film. Um, let's uh, let's talk about some characters. So, uh, and just the story itself. I guess you got Laura Dern playing Lula. Uh, Nicholas Cage is playing the character of Sailor, and they're kind of on the run. It's kind of like a like a, almost like a Bonnie and Clyde type story, except for they're not like really criminals. Like Nicolas Cage kills somebody in the very beginning. Very vicious scene, by the way. Jesus Christ. Slams that guy's head into the floor until his brains are all over the place. I was like, geez, what are we doing here? Like that was like way over the top. I know the guy came at him with a knife, but I was like, 
Oh my God, that escalated so quickly. Um, and then he goes to jail, he gets out, he hooks back up with Lula. Um, the mother, you know, is, is, is against him for some reason. She doesn't like him, like they're at odds with each other. So he takes his daughter and they go on the road, they're on the run. And the mom hires some bounty hunters to, to find them and, and basically, um, you know, take him out and, and get her daughter back. So that's kind of the story. Uh, if you want to call it a story, again, it's just, it's all over the place. They meet some characters and stuff along the way and some stuff goes awry. They meet Willem Dafoe, like at a certain point in the movie and his character is so out there and crazy. Like I thought he was crazy in the, um, what was the movie? Streets of Fire movie that I watched. I thought that was out there. That was nowhere near as out there as Willem Dafoe's performance in this movie, but it's great. I always loved seeing uh, Willem Dafoe. Definitely a highlight of the movie. It's just, uh, it's it's a very strange character. But I did like Laura Dern and Nicolas Cage together. You know, it is kind of a romance. I thought they had really good chemistry with each other. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of fucking in this movie, <laughs> to be quite frank. I'm sorry I dropped the F-bomb. Uh, there's a lot of sex in this movie. It's, it's almost like the first hour is just Nicolas Cage and Lord Dern getting it on, which, um, you know, it's fine. It's fine. I, I, Lord Dern, you know, showing her, showing her stuff a lot. I can get down with that. I can appreciate that. Um, just a lot of intense sex sequences between Nicolas Cage and Lord Dern in the first half. And again, with all the awkward editing and like big bright lights in your face and the hard rock uh, score going on. It's strange, but it's, I mean, it's David Lynch. It's like, what are you going to do at this point? It's like, you're, you're in for it. You're watching it. I can't, I can say this, like, I may not like all his movies, but I'm at least like intrigued. It's like, it's like watching a car crash that you just can't look away from, uh, with David Lynch sometimes. So I'm, I am, I'm definitely going to watch all of his filmography at one point. I think I'm only missing three now at this point. Cause he only got like eight or nine movies. But I'm definitely going to watch all of this stuff because uh, I'm just curious if I'm ever going to find one that I just love, that just blows me away and I love because I haven't found it yet. Again, I like Blue Velvet okay. This was okay. I would say this might be my favorite. I don't know. It might be my favorite. I might like it a little bit more than Blue Velvet. Um, but again, that's not saying too much. I'm not a huge fan of this director. So I'm trying to see if I have anything else to say. Um, but yeah, just bizarre, it's some bizarre direction. It's David Lynch. Uh, again, what are you going to do? Crispin Glover's in this movie. He shows up for like five minutes. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's a romance story. So it does have some sweet endearing qualities to it. Um, you know, they're on the run and then he ends up back in jail. They have a kid together. There's this very strange scene at the end. There's a lot of Wizard of Oz, uh, influence like thrown out this there's like somebody looking in on him through a crystal ball throughout the movie I don't know what's going on there I imagine that kind of plays into the ending but um, the witch of the the good witch shows up from Wizard of Oz is that what she was called the, the Glinda the good witch shows up at the end uh, played by a different actress of course this is you know 60 years removed from the Wizard of Oz or 50 something years removed from it um, and she comes down because he's getting ready to walk away from his family he's like I don't want to put you all in danger anymore he walks away and then the good witch shows up he's like you need to go back uh, it's just very strange I'm gonna I'm gonna show it for you guys right here I'm gonna because I did film it on my phone um, it's very strange, but then he goes back and they get together. So it's kind of a happy ending. It's kind of a happy ending. So that's kind of sweet. Um, but again, very weird. Uh, Nicholas Cage, talk about his performance a little bit. He is again, like dialed up to 11 in this movie. He's like that scene where he bashes that guy's brains in is just so crazy. Uh, like zero to 11 in like five seconds, but it's also a very like, He's like trying to act like Elvis, I feel like, for half of this movie. And he's like singing Elvis songs. So that influence is obviously there. I think that's what he was going for. He's really good. Like him and Laura Dern are really good in this movie. For the type of movie that it is, like they fit right in. Like it is incredible how these actors can be like, uh, can play in these like super serious, like dramatic roles. And then at the same time, in the same time period, they play these crazy outlandish characters in a David Lynch world. It just shows the range that they have. So I do appreciate that in the performances here. Um, but again, it's, I just don't know with the style of David Lynch. It, it, the movie's just not, I don't want to say it's not for me. Like maybe I'll like it at some point. Maybe I just, maybe I, David Lynch has to grow on me. I don't know. But as of right now, I'll give Wild at Heart a 3.5 out of a 5. It's a good movie. I do recommend watching it. Getting into the transfer, I thought Shout Factory did a really good job with this transfer. This is from 2018, I think, when it came out. 
Um, I don't know. I imagine it's just a 2K scan. Didn't seem like or feel like a 4K scan to me. Again, I should have looked all this stuff up, but I didn't. It looks really good. There's a lot of outdoor sequences and all the colors and everything looks good. Like there's just a lot of, like I said, bright colors in your face. Like when that witch shows up at the end, that, that whole sequence looked really good. So the costumes and stuff, Laura Dern's wearing a lot of, a lot of sexy costumes and clothing and stuff. Just like real bright colors and everything and all of it just looks really good. Uh, so a really good Blu-ray uh, 2K transfer by Shout Factory here. They did a really good job. Um, I imagine cleaning this one up as, as good as they possibly could. Um, and getting into the... Uh, trying to look up and see like what the audio is. So it has a DTS HD Master Audio 5.1, which is pretty standard for these uh, releases. And, uh, you know, as far as the special features, a lot of good special features in here. There's like at least two and a half hours worth of special features. There's an hour of deleted scenes here, over an hour. There's a new interview with the novelist because this was based on a novel uh, and the novelist was Barry Gifford. And I, this was actually a really interesting special feature because usually what the authors... Uh, they'll go against the directors and they'll be like, well, he what he did with mine, you know, wasn't my vision. That's not what I intended. I don't like this movie. But what Barry did was actually pretty cool. Um, and when he was talking about it, he was like, no, this isn't like exactly what I intended, um, you know, with my book. These characters to be in this world is not what I envisioned when I wrote it. But at the same time, this is an adaptation. David Lynch has the right to take uh, this book and the ideas in it and make it his own. Um, even though it necessarily the choices that he made aren't mine, I definitely endorse this movie and the decisions that he made. So I thought that that was pretty cool how the artist was, you know, basically putting over David Lynch's film and saying like, look, this is a good film. I enjoy it, even though it's not exactly what I what I envisioned that it that it should be when I wrote it. So that was pretty cool. Love, Death, and Elvis and Oz, The Making of Wild at Heart documentary. That's about 30 minutes. The interview with the novelist is about 30 minutes as well. This is a good documentary. I did watch almost the whole thing, but they go into like uh, the actress that played the Good Witch at the end and how they had to like string her up and stuff um, and drop her down. So pretty cool stuff there. Um, one thing I found out in the... Uh, the actual, uh, you know, making of was that her mom, uh, Laura Dern's mom in this movie is actually her mom in real life. So that, I thought that that was pretty cool as well. Um, and yeah, you got the original 1990 making uh, of EPK Image Gallery TV spots, Lynch on the DVD process. Uh, so I, I think that's Lynch talking. I didn't watch this one, but I think that's Lynch talking about the uh, how they remastered the DVD back in the day, which is pretty cool that they included that one in here. And you have specific, uh, specific spontaneity focus on David Lynch. So just tons of great special features. Uh, Shout Factor really went the extra mile with this release. And getting into the packaging a little bit, this is really cool artwork on, on this. I do like the artwork right here. I'm trying to see. Uh, cover illustrator is Antonio Stella. Uh, so they did a really good job on this. I really like the title screen as well when it comes on because it's the same image. And Shout Factory always does a great job with their title screen. So I just wanted to kind of call that out as well. But some cool disc art also. I do like the disc art. I don't know if this ever came out with like a slip cover or anything, but I would love to have the slip cover with this one. But uh, yeah, and this is just the regular. I imagine this was the poster or the VHS cover or the DVD cover or whatever, uh, but still really cool. You know, Shout Factor, Screen Factor always does some good reversible cover art unless they're doing 4K transfers and then they don't do any reversible cover art. But uh, there you go. There you have it, guys. That's my review of Wild at Heart. Hope you enjoyed it. I know a lot of people were... Uh, you know, looking forward to me watching this one. I hope I didn't disappoint you. I did like the movie. I did like the movie, but again, I was hoping for a more straightforward, traditional, like crime love story. Um, and this is a David Lynch film using those aspects and, and playing in that genre. But it's a, it's a David Lynch film at its core. It's very bizarre and weird and dreamlike and surreal, just like all of his other movies. It's just, you got Nicolas Cage and, and Laura Dern, um, you know, getting it on a lot. So there you go. But uh, Wild at Heart, that's my review, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like this video. Comment down below your thoughts on Wild at Heart. Do you own the Shout Factory release? If it sounds interesting to you, I will be leaving a link down below uh, for purchase. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Turn on the bell notifications and follow me on all my social media accounts. Those links are in the description, and we'll see you next time.